She had to have been the one to do this. Ain't nobody else. Because who? Because who? Hey y'all, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. My name is Janae, if you didn't know, and today's video is another true crime episode. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, y'all, so I did my nails last week. I tried to do a poly gel set. Um, This is what they look like. And this one broke because I made it too thin, but overall, I think I did a decent job. They don't look too bad. I mean, a couple of them look like I needed a fill as soon as I was finished, but other than that, you know, I think I did a good job. And also, y'all, my kids is out for summer break, and the most I'm going to do is kick them out the living room when I'm recording. I'm not going to make them, like, go to their rooms and be silent for the duration of my filming. So y'all might hear a little bit of ruckus here and there, but, you know, I got kids, so it is what it is. And, yeah, other than that... I think we about ready to just hop into the case. And today we are going to be talking about Risa Trexler, who was born on October 11th, 1968 in a small community called Salisbury, North Carolina. And Salisbury is, like I said, a small community. It's the type of place where everybody knows everybody is very safe. You know, the type of place where people kept their doors unlocked. And Risa lived here with her mom, Vicky, and her little sister, Jody. And just across the way, walking distance, lived their grandparents. You could see the grandparents' house from Vicky and Jody's bedroom. And so because of the distance between the two houses, it wasn't unusual for any member of Vicky's household to go over to her parents' household. And so it's June 15th, 1984, and summer break had pretty much just started for them in North Carolina. And so like teenagers do, Jody and Risa was chilling at their house with their friends, Jim and Paul, who was pretty much more Risa's friend than Jody's friends because Risa, Paul, and Jim, they were all in like the older teenager bracket. And then Jody, you know, she was the little sister trying to hang out with the big sister and her friends, right? So like I said, they all chilling at the house, watching MTV, the brand new, you know, music video channel that just came out a couple years ago, all anticipating who gonna be performing at the very first VMA. And... You know, just enjoying the likes of videos from Elton John, Prince, Michael Jackson, and Madonna. And like I said, Jody is trying to join in on the festivities with Risa and her friends. And Risa is like, going on the girl, like, shoo, you are the little sister. I love you, but like, let me hang out with my friends. It was the normal you know, back and forth sister banter, like, I'm a teenager too, but you're not old as us. Like, sh get at them, okay? Anyway, so it's around three o'clock in the afternoon and Jim and Paul decide that they gonna head on out because Risa wanted to watch her soap operas. And one thing was for sure, Paul and Jim was not trying to watch no soap operas. And second of all, Paul had to go to a summer job that he had. And so the two of them left the residence, leaving Risa and Jody home by themselves. Cause I think their mama was at work. I'm not really 100% sure what she was doing, but Vicky wasn't at home. So once Jim and Paul left, Jody went to her room, started listening to music, talking to her friends on the phone, you know, doing what teenagers do. But it wasn't too long after she went to her room that she realized that her sister wasn't at the house either. And so she pretty much just figured that her sister went to her grandparents' house. And so she started to walk to her grandparents' house as well. And while she was walking over there, she noticed that her grandparents' car wasn't in the driveway. And so she figured that Risa had probably went over there and ended up running errands with her grandparents. So she ain't really think too much of it and she just headed back to the house where she continued doing what she was doing, listening to music, calling her friends on the phone, talking to people, yada, yada, yada. So Jody is just in her room chilling. And remember I told y'all that the grandparents' house was visible from Jody and Reese's bedroom. So Jody's just having to look out the window and she see her granddad running out of the house screaming. So Jody, trying to figure out what's going on, runs out of her house and runs over to her grandparents' house. And when she get inside, she don't really see too much going on. But when she makes it to the spare bedroom, she sees her sister, Risa, on the floor bleeding. But at this point, Jody really don't know, like, is Risa hurt really bad? Is she just hurt really bad or is this something worse? Like, she, I don't think her brain could comprehend what she was actually looking at. And it's around this time that Vicky returns home and she see the frenzy going on over at her parents' house. And so she run over there to see like what the hell is up also. And at first she thinks something happened to her mom because that is the more, I wanna say practical reasoning 
because her mom is a little bit older maybe she took a fall and it wasn't so looking so good or you know you know just she didn't think that something happened to her 15 year old child right so she runs into the house to see you know to check on her mom but unfortunately she ends up running into the spare bedroom where she too sees Risa laying on the floor in a pool of blood and she looked in her daughter's eyes and she said that she knew right away that Risa was no longer with her she knew right then and there looking at her baby that her baby was gone and unfortunately she was absolutely right so obviously the police are called and they come to process the scene and they make notes that Risa is fully nude and they do end up finding um semen and she is covered in multiple stab wounds and the knife blade is still sticking out of her chest they believe that Risa was sexually assaulted however it's 1984 and DNA is nowhere near what it is today and so all they really could do was collect the semen and bag it like they really couldn't do too much with what they found at the scene they could only make assumptions that she was sexually assaulted but they also knew that Risa was a 15 year old teenager so this could have been something that was consensual as far as why the semen was there but they just couldn't be sure so they did bag it as evidence and once Risa's body was taken to the morgue it was discovered that she was stabbed 18 times so now Reese's body is at the morgue but they still have to continue processing the scene they found that there was no signs of forced entry they did collect fingerprints which will ultimately end up being just the fingerprints of the residents of the house or you know people who was there frequently like Risa, Jody, Vicky and their grandparents and they also found hair but unfortunately the hair didn't have a root and at the time they needed a root of a hair to be able to like I don't know if it was DNA tested or um I don't know get a, get a sample type I don't know what they had to do but they needed a route to be able to try to figure out whose hair it was and they didn't have that so they couldn't too much do anything with the hair so naturally the next step was to talk to the people who had last seen her which was Risa Paul and Jim so when they questioned Paul he pretty much was like look I was at work I'm sorry I don't know what happened to Risa of course he was devastated by this because that was one of his closest friends but he was at work and they was able to corroborate his alibi and I really don't know too much what Jim was doing but it said that he couldn't be linked to the crime scene either. I don't know if he had an alibi or I don't know what was going on with Jim but he could not be linked to the crime either and so those two while they were kind of ruled out as suspects they weren't 100% ruled out as suspects. So next they wanted to talk to the granddad whose name is Walt Monroe. So they talked to Walt and Walt is 100% cooperative. He tells them everything that he did that day. He tells them how he came home, found his granddaughter, freaked out, called the police, and now he's here. And while they couldn't 100% rule him out either they did believe that he was telling the truth so he was kind of ruled out just like Paul and Jim but not 100% ruled out just like Paul and Jim and so now since the police don't have enough evidence to arrest anybody in a small town like Salisbury rumors is gonna start to flow in and that's exactly what they did there were so many rumors there was rumors that Paul stabbed her. There was rumors about Jim. There was rumors that Walt, the grandfather, was abusing the girls in a sexual nature, which which was not true, by the way. Like, that was absolutely 100% not true. But those are the rumors that he was sexually assaulting the girls and that he walked in on Risa with a boy. He got enraged and murdered her. I mean, just rumor upon rumor upon rumor, you literally could not walk into the grocery store in Salisbury without hearing somebody talk about what happened to Risa and who was potentially involved. And there was a rumor about one particular person who not only the townspeople believe did this wholeheartedly, but the police also believed that this person did this wholeheartedly. And that person was Jody, 
Reese's little sister because just four days after Reese passed away they held her funeral and at the funeral Jody was kind of like I don't want to say stoic what was the word what's the word cold and emotionless like she didn't cry she didn't break down like this 13 year old girl literally lost her sister to murder and saw her body afterwards like for her not to show any emotion at the funeral people that had people's eyebrows raising you know the rumors like i said was swirling and this rumor that jody had somehow committed this crime was all that people were talking about so the police latched on to this and they brought jody in for questioning and when they brought her in, it wasn't like they was questioning her. It was more like they were interrogating her. They asked her what she was doing that day, all of her movements. They asked her what Risa was doing that day. They accused her of being jealous of Risa. They made her give fingernail samples, saliva samples, hair samples from her head and her pubis. Like, can you imagine being a 13 year old girl who just lost her sister having to literally give pubic hair samples and you know that in giving pubic hair samples and giving any samples there has to be people present but jody being the person who did this just made so much sense to the police because she was the only one out of the last three people to see risa who didn't have an alibi she was literally home alone by herself so basically she didn't have an alibi and it just made sense and police was so hard on Jody being the person who did this that they got into Vicky's head and Vicky started questioning Jody. And I mean, like, literally, she was asking Jody the questions that the police was asking her. Like, what did Jody do that day? What did Risa do that day? Are you jealous? And it got so bad to the point where Jody just didn't even want to talk to her mama no more. Because Jody would constantly tell her mama, like, look, I didn't do this. This was not me and she really just couldn't understand why out of all people her mama was questioning her and so as jody grew up she grew more and more isolated because nobody wanted to talk to her she couldn't go to the grocery store without somebody calling her a murderer she couldn't go enjoy herself at the movies without people just ridiculing her and just talking down on her and she couldn't go home to talk to her mama because her mama was questioning her and even though the police was so heavy on jody they didn't have enough concrete evidence to say that it was jody for sure so they couldn't arrest her or anybody else and unfortunately Risa's case went cold but that definitely didn't stop the police and the people of the town saying that Jody was the number one suspect in all of this. And as the years went on, every now and again, every couple of years, new detectives would, you know, reopen the case. And if the rumors had died down before, the detectives reopening the case would reignite all of the previous rumors about the family having to be involved, about her having a secret boyfriend, about Jody being the one who did it, about her grandfather, just all of the rumors from the beginning every single time they reopened this case all of those rumors recirculated so a couple of years go by and when i say a couple i mean a whole hell of a lot because at this point jody is grown it's 2010 and 26 years have passed since reese's murder and at this point facebook is starting to bloom and blossom as the social media platform that we know today and there was a couple of groups on there that were dedicated to reese's case and in these groups all of those rumors were recirculating all of those rumors stating that Jody had to have been the one who done this and if she didn't do it like physically she had helped somebody to do this pretty much all of the Facebook groups had a smear campaign against Jody like saying that she's still the suspect she had to have been the one to do this ain't nobody else because who because who and Jody was still adamant that it wasn't her she would even try to join these Facebook groups to try to like 
clear her name but every time she would try to join one of the groups they would pretty much just kick her out and by 2018 jody was literally just sick of the shit she was sick of it all so she had been watching dr phil and she knew that he polygraphed people she knew that he performed polygraph tests on people and so she just shot her shot she emailed the dr phil show without any without any expectation of them emailing her back but they did and so on april 9 2018 Jody went to the Dr. Phil show to pretty much clear her name. She told Dr. Phil the whole story and they gave her a polygraph test and they asked her, did she know what ha did she know who was involved with Reese's murder and was she the one who did it pretty much? And she passed. She passed that polygraph test and she pretty much had the whole town sitting there looking stupid in the face and all the people, not all of them, but a couple of the people who had X'd her out and accused her of being the person who killed Risa, was coming in her DMs apologizing. And because of this Dr. Phil appearance, Risa's case went from local to national. And that put a lot of pressure on the Salisbury Police Department because now not only did the Salisbury area, like the town of Salisbury, want to know what happened to Risa, but the whole world wanted to know what happened to Risa because Jody didn't do it. Or at least that's what the polygraph said. As we know, polygraphs ain't always the best. But I mean, she passed. So just a couple days after the airing of the Dr. Phil show, Salisbury Police Department reopened Reese's case. Now, Jody and Vicky pretty much didn't have no faith in Salisbury Police Department at this point because it had been over 20 years and they didn't they didn't have nothing. Like, what y'all gonna do now? So they really didn't have no faith in the Salisbury Police Department, but the thing about it is the DNA, the semen sample that they collected at the crime scene back in 1984, it was preserved. It had been preserved. So they was able to send that off to a lab so that it can get tested. And a couple weeks later, after it was sent off to the lab, it came back and there was a DNA profile. Unfortunately though, that profile wasn't entered into CODIS or in any national database. So they pretty much, all they had was a profile, but there was some even newer DNA technology that this detective had just learned about, and that was the familial DNA test. So the detective ended up sending another sample off to this, you know, familial DNA testing lab. And from this familial DNA test, they was able to narrow it down to a specific person. And in 2019, they were able to give Jody and Vicky a name. His name was Curtis Edward Blair. Now this was a name that had nobody ever heard of before. This was the man who who they think, I want to say they think because at this point it's just, you know, familial DNA test. So this is the man who they, they think was the murderer of Risa. Jody really didn't do it. Now there's not a lot of information about Curtis Edward Blair, but they did find out that he worked at a Frito-Lay factory that was the next block over from where Reese's family lived. So finally, they had the name of this man. But unfortunately, it turns out that Curtis passed away in 2004. And so they weren't able to like go to him and talk to him and get any information. But they did have to exhume his body because they had to make sure that his DNA was a DNA match. They couldn't just say that it was him 100% based off of a familial DNA test, they had to make sure that they were correct and it wasn't one of his cousins or brothers who did it, right? And so they did end up exhuming his body and the DNA that they extracted from the exhumed remains of Curtis were in fact a match to the semen that was found on Risa in 1984. So Curtis was Risa's murderer. But like I said, unfortunately he passed away and so the family will never get any type of justice or answers to all of the questions that they have. But the good that came out of this was that Jody was exonerated as number one suspect. She really didn't do it. This woman had been blamed for upwards of 35 years. A 13 year old girl had been accused of killing her sister for 35 years. And everybody believed it everybody believed it nobody took her at her word not even her mom even though they repaired their relationship but yeah y'all i'm glad they finally got the name of the person who did it unfortunately they won't get any justice for it 
But I'm glad that Jody's name was cleared and that she can finally live in peace. But damn, can you imagine being accused of killing your sibling for 35 years knowing good and damn well you didn't do it? But yeah, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think about this case down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Relax. I sound like fucking Voldemort. Voldemort. No, I don't. I sound like Harry when he's speaking Puzzle Tuttle. And Risa lived here with her mom, Vicky. Is her mama named Vicky? They noticed that there was no signs of forced entry and that all the fingerprints that they collected, oh wait, without any expectation of them calling her back, but, oh, not, not calling. There was some even newer details They was able to narrow it down to a person who it was potentially of. No, wait, what?